<laughs> How's it going? Anthony Fro here, Great Sci-Fi. Today I want to talk to you about uh, Zenith Run, right? This no-budget series that I've been making uh, for about four or five months now, on and off. So, again, you know, what I offer on this channel, I think that's a little bit different, is I do the props, and I do the costumes, and I do special effects and kit bashing, and all these things that you can find uh, elsewhere, but... Um, like most of the time, the things that I'm making and sharing will at some point be incorporated in an actual production, be it a short film or series, DIY, low budget, just get it done sort of production. Except for like Galactic Galaxy, we're at a proper budget and in the future, you know, um, it's very random, you know, when you get the budgets and when you don't. So the thing that I find that's important is to just uh, keep moving forward and um, DIY filmmaking is, is a great tool for, for doing that. And it's also a great way to get started. And if you're already started, it's a great way to experiment, right? So <laughs> that, that's my pitch, right? Why uh, this is important to me and why I think it's worth sharing with you, right? So um, let's talk about Zenith Run. So the first thing that people think about usually is the budget, which shouldn't be. The first thing you should think about is writing your script. But um, I work with something that I call the momentum budget, right? And I have a video where I kind of uh, explain to you in great detail of, of what that is to me. And, uh, um, you know, I take you through it step by step and I'll link to that. And, you know, there's going to be lots of links in this video because I've covered a lot of this stuff. But right now I'm talking about how it all pertains to Zenith Run, hopefully uh, to help you sort of uh, get a grasp on things and get started yourself. You know, the one thing that people will say right away, not all people, like two out of a thousand, is that, well, there's no such thing as zero budget. That, that's absolutely right. And that's why I call it no budget, right? So what I basically mean by that is you have no budget, but you have an idea, you have a passion, right? So um, zero budget, no budget is the same thing. I, I guess no budget, I think... Is, is a little more specific in saying that there is no budget, but it, it will cost money, obviously, but um, you're, you're moving forward without a, a budget in place, right? So it's very DIY, um, very roll up your sleeves, get your friends involved, and um, it's, it's very doable. So I'm, I'm gonna illustrate that with Zenith Run. I mean, and if you do feel like you do need money, you know, you can use crowdfunding and I actually have a crowdfunding example video uh, on the channel. But the whole purpose of this project was to do no budget, right? We have no money to start and we're just going to figure out how to get this done. And as I said, Zenith Run is our example of that. So the hardest part is, you know, you have to have a script, right? And for some people, this is very daunting. Um, or they sort of stay in a, in a loop, you know, just rewriting and rewriting and rewriting. Um, so for, you know, our no budget project, what I did with Zenith Run is I did um, a story outline and then um, I got together with the actors and we improv the dialogue, which I think if it's your first project, that's maybe something that might be um, useful, interesting to you. Now, of course you have to have actors that can handle that. You, that you definitely can't just do with your friends, right? You wanna get actors for that. But the thing to keep in mind, especially with a short, is you want to uh, follow some sort of story structure, right? You don't want it to be a character study or wow, this is a cool ship or whatever. You, you wanna give the audience something to sort of pique their interest, get them invested in it, right? So I use, um, especially with shorts, the, the Dan Harmon um, story circle, which yes, I have a video about that. So I'll link to that below. And when I write, I also do something that I call free writing, which is a good way to get started where, um, you know, I'll write a script, but I won't write it in script format. I'll just free write the ideas, how I see them. And then from that document, um, then I'll start to create my script and, you know, we'll, here's a link to that video as well. So because I knew I was going to be doing Zenith Run with no budget, I sort of 
built that into my idea for the story, right? So I, I was toying around with the idea of like the 80s buddy cop movies, right? Like Beverly Hill Cops and, and Bad Boys, which maybe that was the 90s, and Starsky and Hutch, like all these great um, movies that are fun. And my idea was the characters would be in the cockpit of a spaceship, that way with no budget, um, we're just in this cockpit. Now, once I had the idea, the concept, and then I applied the story circle and came up with my outline, and again, you know, broke a record, but that outline's very important just to give yourself the beats that you wanna hit, right? And if uh, doing an improv script is something that you're interested, leave a, leave a comment and I'll, I'll do an episode specifically on, on how to um, set that up right so um, I had my buddy cop idea so the next thing I needed to do was cast now um, in Galactic Galaxy I worked with a great actress uh, Julia Morozawa and I knew that she could handle this now if you don't have access to actors like I did um, you could do a casting in a Craigslist or if you're in a large city there'll be like a backstage or, or a college and in this video, um, I review the casting process and, and take you through that step by step. Now, like I said, I was lucky to have Julia on board. And um, this is another thing to, to think about um, when you're doing something for no budget, right? It's all about making people comfortable. You have to go a little further than you would if you were paying somebody. And in this case, um, I, I approached Julia and said, you know, it's gonna primarily be you and one other actress, so why don't you recommend the actress that you wanna work with, right? So that does a lot of things. One, you get instant chemistry because they've worked together. Wait, do it again, because I'm still laughing, hold on. Okay, hey. Two, uh, they're friends, so um, they're, they're riffing off each other, they're engaged with each other they're um, making a commitment to each other, right? So you know people <laughs> will show up. And then uh, lastly is, is you know, you're, you're not paying people, right? So you have to be very gracious, right? And very humble. So that was a way for me to solve a lot of problems and it, and it worked out well, as you'll see. So this is what I love about process. So Julia recommended Shayna and I looked at Shayna's reel and she was amazing. So I was thrilled to have her uh, be on board, but when I looked at her work, it didn't quite fit with my original idea, right? But this is always good because it, it makes you think, you know, outside of sort of your narrow lane. Then it occurred to me, Midnight Run with uh, Charles Grodin and Robert De Niro. Really great movie, you should check it out if you've never seen it. But basically it was a bounty hunter and uh, somebody who had embezzled, but they embezzled maybe not for bad reasons, maybe for good reasons, got caught up in something. And it was the two of them driving cross country. So I thought, oh, this would be a good touchstone. So then I based it more on that, right? So now I have a starting off spot and, you know, I start working on my outline. So now Zenith Run, we have the script, we have the actors, and when you're doing something for no money, it's important to put together your team, your your band, right? <laughs> your your gang, because you're all in this together and you're all working towards a goal, but you have no money, so you're investing your time, so you need to build some sort of um, trust, a, a group, you know? You, you're in this together, and it's very important to establish that. That's a very important part of, of making a film for no budget. So we have meetings, uh, we do table rehearsals, just script rehearsals. Because we're improv we just sort of have one day where we talk about things that we wanna make sense of so that we know before we start shooting, right? So now um, let's talk about doing uh, pre-production, getting into production with no budget. So here's where we get into what it does cost, right? So the way I always talk about this is you're gonna go to a concert or to a show or it's the weekend or you're gonna go to dinner or something. And you know, you could spend like a hundred bucks or maybe you see the latest gadget that you gotta have and you go on Amazon and you buy it. It's That's the kind of money that we're talking about. And during the time when you're doing your no budget production, that's what all those resources go to, right? So, you know, instead of going out to dinner, once this month for $80, I'm gonna use that $80 
to buy batteries or to, you know, if I got to go to the thrift store and buy costumes and I'll, and I'll get into that more later. So that's the cash that you will spend, right? That kind of cash. All right. So now the nitty gritty, the basics, we're going to need rehearsal, costume, props, set, crew, talent, right? So let's just go down that list. Rehearsal, I think, is pretty easy. That's usually a home or office, uh, garage, a bedroom, park. Um, if you have limited space, you do it at a table. If you do have access to some sort of space, you can move around, you get up around and you move around. And it's important, especially when you have no budget and limited time, to really rehearse everything and, and get everybody on the same page so that you're not uh, wasting time with that stuff on the actual day you're shooting. Props, of course, that's why most of you are here <laughs> at my channel. At some point you were looking at prop tutorials. So yes, props, um, dollar store, thrift store, Amazon Prime, you know, you can find things for a couple dollars. Now, the one thing I made specifically for uh, Zenith Run, so you can sort of see a real uh, world example is I made these shackles in this blindfold. Wanted to give them a little sci-fi metallic look. So you can link to that video and then you can see the actual build for the actual prop that we used in the actual production. <laughs> now with the costumes, I got away with about $20 per costume. Um, and these I recycled from Erringer and my other film, Triangulate. So um, in these videos, I go to the thrift store and I made this costume for Triangulate and then this you know, I, I put it away and then I took it out of storage and used it for uh, Zenith Run. But originally, I, I think I paid about $20 in raw materials. So again, you know, you just don't buy lunch that day. Now for the set, there is no set, but there's um, prop pieces that are set pieces, right? So I knew I, I had this sort of concept that it was all in cockpits, right? So uh, the idea was to take office chairs, turn them into pilot chairs, and then put them in a green screen. So again, thrift store, this chair I think I got for a dollar, um, but still, again, you're gonna spend under $20, materials, probably another $15 in foam, and then here's the actual chair uh, that I built for this production. And then I also uh, built a little console that I also built from the thrift store, and I have a detailed build of this, and what I think is helpful, this is the actual uh, piece that ends up in, in the series. Now, like I said, part of my concept was these chairs on a green screen, right? So the green screen is challenging, and I had my challenges with this one, which was bad for me, good for you, because I'll go over how to deal with that, right? But if you don't want to do a green screen or you're not comfortable with that right out of the gate, well, <laughs> we made a set from the dollar store. So uh, I have uh, this $20 set build that I did with um, trays from the dollar store. And actually um, for the past four or five months on my channel, whenever I'm signing off for my videos, I'm actually on that set. So that's an option. But back to Zenith Run, I had an office um, that the lease was up and then I was already moved out of there. So I had an empty space for a month. So that's what sort of motivated this, right? So uh, I wanted to use this as a demonstration. So that office, the size of it, it could easily be a garage, a bedroom, a shed, uh, an office. Lots of people, you know, they work at a place for a long time. They have a relationship, you know, with the boss or the owner. You can come in at night after hours and use like a conference room or something. So um, that office space, I feel, uh, was a really good example. So I went in there and that's where we filmed Zenith Run. So crew, actors, you know, they're easier to get with no budget because like you, they're, they're invested in the creation, right? So I'll have this project that I could show to people and say, oh, I directed this, I created this. Actors will have it for their reel. Um, you know, they can demonstrate, uh, you know, their craft and they have something to work on it. But just hardcore, like sound people, grips, they're, they're not motivated by that, right? A director of photography, 
You should try to get a, a friend, sort of a uh, somebody in your band, in your gang, because that's similar too, where they want stuff for the real. They want to maybe sometimes, uh, like I said, with the improv, with the actor choosing the other actress, sometimes with the director of photography, you might have a specific way you want to shoot, but the director of photography might have some process of filming that he's never done before and he'd love to try or she so if it's a project where they get to exercise and try out something they haven't done before sometimes that's a way but uh, another way to go about it is um right it's no budget so uh with sound uh you can get a zoom recorder or you can do sound on the phone i'm doing sound on the phone right now and that's like a five dollar app and you can get lav mics for around twenty dollars so again you're you're skipping a night out <laughs> if you have to dp yourself you can film it on the phone i film 90 percent of these um how-to videos on the phone i'm on the phone right now filming that's all very doable right when you're producing it's all about problem solving right it's it's plate spinning you just have to keep things going and you, you just can't stop. Because if you stop, everything stops and it's so hard to get going again. So you just have to power through. But that's a very uh, important thing to consider. And it's, you know, that's, that's for real. Like that is going to happen. <laughs> so you're gonna have to power through. Now, keeping with that train of thought, you have to prepare on the day that you're shooting for everything to go wrong because something will go wrong. Hopefully just one thing. Now, uh, with a proper budget, you have backup props and you have duplicates of things and you have assistance and, and you have backups in place because that's one of the reasons why it's so expensive is it's sort of built in. But when you're doing it yourself, you just have to take caution. You know, I only have one costume, so I need to make sure on the shooting day, I have a needle and thread. You know, uh, for the set, I have a can of black spray paint and hot glue and, you know, you, you have to, you know, duct tape, lots of duct tape. <laughs> you have to have like a kit and you have to be prepared, right? Because something will go wrong. So the 48 hours before, you just want to meditate on everything that can go wrong. And that one thing that does go wrong and you're ready for it, you'll be glad that you planned for it. And be prepared, something will go horribly wrong. <laughs> All right, so now post-production. So for Zenith Run, I'm the editor and the VFX, right? So that solves a lot of problems. And I always say this, if, if you're really committed to uh, just making a film, no budget, momentum budget, you really need to have as the director, as the creator, you really need to have uh, one of those skills. Editing, um, at the least. If you don't, that's fine, you can work it out. I do, again, I have videos, uh, give you some editing basics. But if you don't have the ability to edit and do VFX yourself, it's the same process as finding the DP, as finding the actors. You have to find somebody who's willing to do it. Finding somebody to do VFX for no money is challenging you can find it or you could do locked off shots and teach yourself right so there's so many videos out there i have videos other people have videos you could do this yourself right that's too much on that subject but i just want you to be prepared now one thing that i did with zenith run that was really helpful is the dp had one camera where they would lock off and find the close-ups but i also had a second camera filming the wide shot at the same time so when i was able to go uh into the editing and have the two shots do a multi-clip and that really helped my coverage and um saved a lot of time saved a lot of money so then once you edit it because we're doing science fiction and we're going to do a lot of visual effects and comping then you have to have the picture locked right and he, there's a link below to my video on picture lock picture lock is important because once you start adding um, visual effects, layering and backgrounds and lights and HUDs, you can't, that takes so long to render and it's so finicky to do that work. You can't be arbitrarily a week later like, oh, I'm going to cut that shot out or I'm going to move this here. Like the picture has to be locked 
locked. <laughs> and then you start doing your visual effects, right? So with Zenith Run, once it was locked, then I started getting into the visual effects. Then I started getting into this green screen. Now this green screen was a nightmare. Now I know better. If you look at Galactic Galaxy, I shot that entire thing on a green screen and I rented a proper studio. That was easy. That was a joy. I did the right thing. So now Zenith Run, you know, I didn't have any money. And um, in my haste to demonstrate this, I just put up a green curtain, which would have been fine. But again, you know, things are always changing. You have to um, put out fires. You have to be prepared for anything. And the worst happens. So, I was not able to capture my two shot with the green screen. So I had to very quickly throw up uh, some more green. And then you see here, it just, it just is terrible. And this, if you've ever keyed before, this is gonna be a problem. Now, the good thing for you is that once I started dealing with this, I knew that I would be able to figure something out. But this is probably more realistic and more typical of what's gonna happen to you on your first time out. I'm gonna tell you, you need to have a perfect green screen, and, but, but it's still gonna end up like this, right? So this is a good way uh, to demonstrate how I solved and, and dealt with this. Now, um, Zenith Run, post, horrible green screen, but, but we gotta deal with this, right? So the one thing that's my pet peeve, please don't do this, is, you know, you see this all the time, People just do a bad key and they just cut out the person and they put it in front of some sort of sci-fi background and it's, oh, it's science fiction. I, I really, look, it's like we're doing this for no money and you have to be flexible, but we could do better than that, right? So let's just make a promise to ourselves that we're at least gonna do better than that. And if that's all you could do, then that's fine too. And actually, if you're doing like a comedy, sometimes that actually, works out well but let's let's just do a little better than that now when you follow my prop tutorials you know that weathering is a big thing for me right and philosophically that's um, a, a larger umbrella right so if you don't have any money and you're making space guns and costumes if they're dirty and weathered it's easy to sell those as actual objects in your fantasy world right um, if it's pristine like a Star Trek or a 2001 Space Odyssey, you know, that white, stark sci-fi look. That's very difficult to do with no money, and, and I would almost recommend to, to shy away from that, right? So with the costumes and the props, the set pieces, everything's weathered, it has that patina on it. So it's the same thing with the film, right? So when we key out the film and we start comping in our background, you know, you'll notice that's pretty stark, but if, if you, start making things more contrasty, like lots of shadow. Like here, if we just add a light, now the light sort of bathes the front foreground and the background and, and things start to come together. And, you know, in the, in the vein of weathering, we do things like we'll add noise over the whole thing, right? And then sometimes w what I'll do is I'll put a flare somewhere. All these elements sort of unify this composited image. I'm doing this in After Effects. It's pretty basic. I think After Effects is intimidating to somebody who's never used it before, but it's like anything else. It's very, very straightforward. And even if you're not able to do this, watching me do this and understanding what goes into it really goes a long way when you're trying to communicate to somebody else who's doing it once you have a basic understanding of, of what it is they're doing. So having that weathering, that patina over the video really helps, you know, to quote Adam Savage, to hide the crimes, right? But that's very true. And that's what you're trying to do, right? You, you don't want to distract the audience with things that look weird, right? Where, you know, sometimes people will comment and say like, oh, that's a heavy weathering or, oh, I wish, you know, you, you had did that more clean or, but, you know, they're, they're not realizing the reality of, of what you're presenting to them, right? So you're, <laughs> it might not be what they want, but it's your best possible scenario. And, you know, 97% of the people that watch it will be fine with it. So what happened with uh, Zenith Run is, you know, I had this terrible green screen. And once I keyed it, and I have experience keying, it's, you know, you're doing this for no money and, you know, there's a, a, a cliche that's true, you know, garbage in, garbage out. You can't fix something that's 
started off broken, right? You can make it better, right? You can massage it, you can polish it. So in the case of Zenith Run, because the, the background was so varied, I was able to get a key, but you get lots of fluctuations. And one way to fix that is very painstaking and you can rotoscope the whole thing, but you're still gonna get a fluctuation, right? And then you can make it work by doing heavy corrections. So at this point you have something that's very stylized. So the way that I find is best to deal with that is you just lean into it, right? You just lean into it. So I'm still dealing with Zenith Run. Um, at the time I was still dealing with, huh, this is not a great key, what am I gonna do? So I was making it very contrasty and everything I talked about in the weathering and you see here, this is sort of what I came up with, but I was still like not quite right. So I abandoned that to, to get my head straight. And then I started working on the, the things that I can control, right? The visual effects. Uh, I created 3D spaceships, right? And um, I have this great music library that I subscribe to. So I had this really cool indie music, but I hit another roadblock. It was very interesting. It was um, the 3D spaceships and the cool music were not matching my sort of no budget image that I captured, right? So in thinking about it, it occurred to me, um, oh, I need to dial this back. And then, you know, why most of you are here now, <laughs> then I got into kit bashing, right? So then, you know, it's these little things that spark and sort of seed everything else. So then kit bashing. So we did the kit bashing here on this video. And uh, like I said, you know, the things I do in this channel are for projects. So those spaceships were all to use for Zenith Run, right? So now I have these practical spaceships that I filmed and these fit really nice, as you see here, right? So now it's starting to make sense. I have these practical spaceships and also they cost no money. It's shampoo bottles and paint. <laughs> so I have these practical spaceships. Then I was like, oh, the music should be really campy, simple synth music. So then the final, you know, cherry on top was this all led to, oh, Grindhouse, right? So Grindhouse, um, you know, you know, B movies, drive-in movies uh, from the 60s. So once I put that treatment on top of everything, then because it's flickery and it has that texture and has that life, all the, the problems I had with my green screen really went away, right? So again, some people might look at that and think, oh, well, oh, I would have liked to have seen it without all that stuff going on. But the reality is for the people who don't feel that way, they're being entertained and they're enjoying what you produced, right? As opposed to without that, to me, it just is too distracting, right? even though <laughs> it's a catch-22. The, the other thing is distracting, but for me, that's what works, right? And that's what's important too. You have to, at some point, please yourself and commit to your choices, right? So these choices, I barely backtrack on because when people don't agree with them, that's fine, right? That's gonna happen. Not everybody's gonna like your work, but I need to know that I tried everything I could try and that was my best possible outcome, and that was my choice. So then that way, if people are, are have a problem with it, or if they, you know, they review it negatively, you, you know that's the best you could do. And then there'll be plenty of people that enjoy it, right? So I, I just think it's important to, to make your choices and to just stick with them, right? And, it, and it'll be fine. And besides, you're, you know, you're going to be moving on to the next project and you're just going to be getting better anyway, right? So, <laughs> Grindhouse, right? So then we arrive at this look. You know, I'm not, like, surprised this happened, to be honest, because it's, there's this, there's this woman at work and, um, you know, I'm pretty sure, like, she's been setting me up this whole time. Like, as far as I know, she's into some seedy things. Okay, so this is an addition to the Zygon transfer. Sounds criminal, ladies, but I like it. Uh, is the pack 
package secure? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, yes, the package is secure. I think there's been a misunderstanding. Um, maybe you can help me. Shh. Keep her silent. I'm talking to you. <laughs> okay. So that's me deconstructing Zenith Rod. A little wordy, but I think people that are interested in doing this, I think it, it, it'll be very helpful, right? And also, I, I want to always put things in perspective, right? So once I arrived at that solution that, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it with this sound, with this visual look, this music. Uh, it's right now as I'm recording this, we're in the limbo of the, the holidays, right? It's between Christmas and New Year's. So it's a great time for me to only focus on this because I have nothing else going on. So I've been working 10, 12 hours a day, just grinding it out, um, all the visual effects, and I'm halfway done, right? So, you know, you have to look at these projects realistically, right? They're, they're going to take your time. And often, even with a budget, you know, if you're working on a short film, and especially if it's science fiction or, or fantasy, something with a lot of effects and layering, it could take you a year. I mean, Galactic Galaxy from concept film to like when I finally just said done, was probably almost three years, right? So for this project, full time, half done, one week, right? So full time would be two weeks, but that's not realistic. You know, I'm just gonna have to do this part time to finish it. But you know, probably take like a month, a few hours here, maybe on the weekends you dig in. So it's gonna take time and you need to be prepared for that. But as I said in the beginning, that's what it costs is your time. And one thing I always come back to is that no matter what, it's gonna be a month from now. And a month from now, I'm going to be coming here and saying to you, hey, here's this new series, Zenith Run. I hope you like it. Or, you know, I'll be having coffee with a friend and saying, oh man, I really want to make this, this short. I should do it, you know? Just commit and make it and just keep moving forward, right? Don't get too bogged down. Because if it's your first, it's probably not going to be good. But that's how you get better. And you know, that's 97% of us. The other 3%, if you're one of the 3%, you're brilliant. You're gonna be great in your first film. It's gonna skyrocket you. <laughs> but for the rest of us, just gotta start making things, right? So I really enjoy this and I really enjoy sharing it with you. I know this was a bit lengthy and more um, theoretical, but there's a lot of links in here. This is very specific of the process for Zenith Run. I'm gonna be releasing that hopefully um, within the month. This looks like I'm on track to do that. So I hope you enjoy that. So as always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. I'd love to read the comments and be sure to check out the merch shop. Buying the merch really helps the channel. We've got the hats, got shirts, got the rainbow colors now. <laughs> and remember, this video was a long winded way of saying, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs>